Hi, it's Harry Smart from Chestnut Products, and we're back in the studio and joined by Stuart Farini. Stuart, it's great to have you here again. Thanks, Terry. It's great to be back. It's always a pleasure to have you in, mate. What are you going to be showing for us today? Well, today, over ebonizing lacquer, I'm going to be using the iridescent paints. I didn't know Gotham was in Suffolk. Just remember, I'm watching. Better not mess it up then. Right, the iridescent paints, I'm never satisfied with just one colour. So for this first example, we're going to have yellow, turquoise, azure and vivid blue. I'm just going to put some gloves on because I'm going to be using paper towel to put the paint on and it's very easy to get paint all over your hands with paper towel. Right, so gloves on. <coughs> I'm going to start off with yellow, but a lot of it is going to get lost by the blue, but it's going to provide a bit of contrast um, that will make it look much more interesting. Give them a little shake uh, when you're going to start pouring them out. There's a little agitator in there to help mix the paint up. And while I'm shaking that, you'll notice I've got a blank on here. It's been sanded to 400 grit and sealed and had several coats, two coats I think, of ebonizing lacquer over the top. Right, so just a squirt of that in the tray and a bit of paper towel. So I'm looking at really low tech ways of putting paint on because a lot of times I've spoken to people and when I first started this I thought well, I'm not an artist, I don't know how to use a paintbrush or paint things realistically, but this is just making patterns. So. I'm just going to put it on with little dabs and you can see you get some very nice uh, uh, effects with the paint put on in this way that frankly I think it would be very hard to achieve with a brush. And this colour combination, it, the strength of the contrast in it is wonderful and I will one day just do something black and yellow but today is not that day. Now, if you're giving yourself a bit more uh, time to plan something, you'll notice today I'm doing it all in one direction. So that can affect the final look of the pattern as well. So here I'm going up, but you could do it as radial patterns around there and you get a slightly different effect as well. Now, using paint in a dusty workshop can be a little problematic, which uh, you've got to tidy your lathe up first, get rid of the sanding dust and anything that might get in the way of the paint. And it does take a little bit longer to dry than the stains. But already, from just one colour, is it, is it me deceiving myself? I think it's quite an attractive finish. I just put my glasses on to admire it more lovingly. Yeah, really, I'm really happy with that. I need it to dry. Best practice is to leave it to air dry. So that will take a couple of minutes or so before I can put the next colour on. Sometimes people like to speed up the drying, so you might get a hair dryer or a heat gun, but be careful you don't blister the paint by getting it too hot. Um, or you can give it another minute or two to dry. And then I sometimes will pat it over the top with a flat bit of paper towel. It doesn't matter if it's not completely dry, but I don't want it to be soaking wet. So you can see that's lifting off some of the paint, but this is my base layer. So it's going to have other colours over the top. If I were to make a completely just yellow and black one I would let that paint dry better because you'll notice there's quite a difference in the appearance now because we've taken off some of that wet paint the lines look a bit thinner and not as interesting right so next color I think we'll go with the azure no the vivid blue and you don't need much of this I was a bit heavy-handed perhaps with the yellow so let's be a little bit more sparing with 
that vivid blue. Uh, I'm actually going to use this bit of paper towel that I was just drying off with. So I'm going to work up from the darker blues to the lighter blues. And I want to make sure there may be some bits around the edges here. You can see where the color hasn't reached the base color. I don't want to leave any of that edge uncovered with any paint. So I'm going to make sure that this one, this paint covers all of those edges. And if necessary, if it, the appearance doesn't look good enough, I'll come back and tidy up those areas with yellow, which actually I think I will do. Just, just a light, light little touch. It's really important that you don't miss anything on the edge because it will stand out as a mistake. So that's that pretty much covered. Good. Right, back to the blue, the dark blue. I may have been a little too sparing with it on my palette, so I'll get a bit more on in a moment. But I think where these colours really pop is with the lighter colours on top of this darker blue. The darker colours work particularly well on textured surfaces where you've got the light hitting them at different angles. There, I think that's, that's enough. Just want to come to the end and have a look because if you're looking at it from just one angle all the time, you, the, the glare, the reflections of light coming off it, you're not going to get an accurate picture of where you've put the paint. Right. Right, so probably that's looking a bit dull compared to how it was with the yellow on it, but we're going to liven that up with our other blues. Just give it a little moment or two to dry. So while that's drying, I shall get ready with the azure and give it a little bit of a shake. Now we've gone from something quite, dare I say, garish, to something a bit subtler, which is probably not my style. <laughs> we'll see how this livens it up. So, a little bit of the azure, try to get the right amount this time and not waste any, but not have to put more in. And that's nearly, nearly dry. Not quite there yet. So let's give it a little pat again. Now less went on, I think, than the yellow. You can see I'm getting a little bit of paint off, but not much. Right. Fold that round, get some paint onto it. So this is going to be lighter. This should stand out a bit more. So manipulate it. Remember getting to the edges. The more you work this, the more you can smooth out or spread out those larger clumps. But I actually want some larger lines left in this because they're giving a bit more texture to the look. So I mean, there's a whole range of other colors. If you, if you wanted to do this with some warmer colors, there's some lovely pinks that I'll be using later on and red. This is for a more sophisticated, subtle technique. Right, so give it a check round the edge. That's where the eye will, will spot if there's anything missing. Doesn't seem to be an awful lot round there. Let's give that another go. 
Now we're getting to the stage where I don't want to mechanically dry this with a piece of paper towel because if I do where we've got the paint gathering here in clumps that's all going to come off and that's what's giving the piece a bit more interest. I do actually need one more little dollop. I think that's the technical term. Now I'm not going to be turning out the center of this so I've got all of this width to play with and decorate but I would always make the rim wider than I would intend it to be just so I know I've got paint all the way up to the very edge wherever I decide that will be. Okay so I've got to leave this to dry now that will take a few minutes and then we'll put the last color on the top which will be the turquoise there's some yellow it's still coming through but if it hasn't got enough life in it then then I'll put a little bit more yellow on very sparingly fingers crossed um, but the next stage will be turquoise but we've got to give it a couple of minutes to dry first right so the azure has dried so now I'm going to move on to turquoise do make sure you give them a good shake before you, you tip the paint out from them though. Right, so this is the last of our colours. And it's going to be the colour I really want to sit on top, although I will We'll be coming back to some yellow. So again, very simple technique, just dabbing paint on. Get it onto the paper towel. See what I'm doing? And here we go. Now, try. I'm going to try not to overwork this and spread it too thin because I want these ripply lines to to remain of course as the paint dries they they lessen a little bit and again that point i was making earlier on i'm keeping them all vertical ish <laughs> And this is really sitting very nicely on top of the other colours. It looks very different from the yellow we started with. But I think it does need some yellow. That might be me and my own personal preference for it. But where I've got these slightly thicker pockets of paint, I just want to spread them a little bit but I want to keep the texture of it so it might look like rolling waves if you're gifted with a strong imagination and again we need to check that the edges are done over here it's a little bit light I think that's because it's down at the bottom of the lathe so I'm going to spin that round to the top and then I've got easier access to get right to the edges. Over here, we've got a little bit missing up the top. I have to stop there. It's easy, too easy sometimes just to carry on and keep going and then all you're really doing if you keep moving the paint around is spreading it thinner and thinner and it's going to have less of an impact. So we're into another, let's wait for it to dry stage. Again, like I said earlier, if you want to speed up the drying, you can. Best practice is to leave it to dry naturally. So time for a cup of tea um, and then back in about 10 minutes or so. 
So the turquoise has dried now, so I'm going to come back to some yellow. And some of you might be looking at the screen and saying, no, it looks great. Why do you want to put more yellow on? Well, I want to do it for the contrast it will give with the blue. Uh, it might be a mistake, but also one of the purposes of these videos is just to encourage you to have a go with the paint, see what happens. You don't have to keep it. You can sand it off and go back and miss out this step if you think it's one step too far. I've got a bit of yellow left in my palette, but I'm going to give myself just a little bit more. It's got a bit dry in there. So just a little bit. And like I said earlier, I want to be quite sparing with this. So get my paper towel ready. And it's on there, it's on there quite thick. So I'm going to use one of the other ones just to wipe off some excess. So I've got a bit more control now with when that yellow goes on. And I want this to be sparing. So I'm going to start in the middle because that will be turned away. Maybe just run a few little lines, keeping that same direction with the paint. Putting it round to the edges and that I think I'm very happy with. I will confess to a moment of trepidation before putting it on that it was going to ruin it but I think it makes it. Just running that through on a this side I'm just going to spin it round because it's a bit awkward working down there. You should always orient your blank to a comfortable position to put your paint on. I think, I think that's enough. You don't have to do this on the lathe, of course. You can take it off and put it on a bench, hand hold it even. especially if you find it difficult to sort of lean and work at your lathe in this way. Right. So I, I don't want the yellow to be really vibrant. It's giving this nice gold effect. But it's, you can see how dry the, the paint is, the other colors. And obviously the more you work it again, the thinner you spread it out. But it's not just a case of slapping it on and that's it. If you look at this bit here, it seems to sort of exist in a bit of isolation. It looks a little bit, uh, it's a bit obvious. I want to soften that in a little. Spread it out a little bit. And give yourself time to check that you've got the edges covered when you're bringing the colour close to the edge. And there might be one or two places. Here it's a little bit thicker. Just going to soften that a little bit. Because I want the yellow to look like it's integrated with the other colours, not just sitting on top of them. Right. So where I've got the lines going, there are a few gaps, which I don't mind, but if they look a bit obvious and empty, I'm just going to put a tiny little speck of yellow there. Okay. And of course you have to get to a point where you stop. Yep. And I'm at that point. So we've got to leave it time to dry again. Right, so it's dry, so let's take it off the lathe and have a look. So there we go, paint's all dried. Now to finish that, you've got a number of choices. I like when the surface is flat like this to use a shiny finish, so either gloss lacquer or wipe on gloss poly. So we'll get some of that put on it and uh, we'll see what that looks like a little later on. 
but the yellow going on, I think that really worked. I was a little worried about it, I have to say. I mean, after all, I am being watched. Right, so I've got another blank on the lathe and I'm going to stick with the same very simple application method, just using paper towel. Going to do a different pattern this time, sticking with yellow as one of the more vibrant colours, especially against the black. So we'll start with this, bit of a shake, and get some put in the palette. And paper towel. This is a very, very easy way of putting colour on. And I'm going for the edge of a folded piece of paper towel this time. So I've got colour on the edge of the paper towel. And I want to try, I'm going to try to keep it at the same angle as I move the blank round. So I'm going to turn the wood rather than move my hand around the wood. So my hand is just going to stay here I'm just going to pat on a line as I move the wood round. Now, after a few taps, obviously you can see there it's not applying in the same thickness. I'm not a big fan of symmetry, so I'm going to try to make it look a little bit asymmetrical. I just, I don't know. I think if you aim for symmetry, you've got to be spot on. Otherwise it looks, if you miss it by a degree or two somewhere, it really stands out. So I'm doing slightly different widths, but generally trying to keep that angle the same. If you really want to keep the angle the same, of course you can do centrifugal spinning of the wood, but that's a whole different technique for another day. So out those edges, I want to just widen it out to take account of that, keeping the same sort of pattern going. And I want to make sure the color is going to the edge. I don't like these bits here where it sort of looks like it's run out of steam. It hasn't quite made it. And again, you can see by just putting light pressure on the paint, you get variations in the texture of it. So here we haven't got to the edge. Let's take it to the edge. And again, we're in the, the land of making sure that you've got rid of the dust in your workspace, the dust on the lathe. Just coming, bringing that right into the middle. Right, have a look at that. That is definitely not symmetrical. Mission accomplished. Right, now I'm going to put the other colours in between. So I don't have to wait for that yellow to dry completely. So the next colour, I think it's my second favourite, the yellow is my first favourite, is the Cerise. I think I'll put it in this one. Give myself a bit of space between the colours in the palette. Right, fold up my next bit of paper towel. And going for the gaps. I'm probably not going to work this quite as much as the yellow. I think the yellow is going to be the standout colour. But I, I like, especially that last one, these last two that have gone on where I've got a thicker line of colour in the middle and then a wider softer feathered edge is very pleasing to my eye. Now, of course, you could 
you could do this in different directions. You don't have to do it with the lines radiating out. You could go for a haphazard cross hatching kind of effect. The limit is just your imagination. The application is really simple. It's not quite finger painting, but it's not far off it. Right, I've got a little bit left in there, so I'm just going to, on these slightly wider areas, just widen out that pink, that cerise a little bit. Okay. Right, give that a little moment to dry off while I get the next color ready. Now, it's not hugely different in looking color in the bottle, um, but this is the red. When it's in the palette, it definitely looks red. There's a little bit of a pink hue to the bottle color. Right, get the edge covered. And I'm going to put that next to the pink. This is a really loud, fun, vibrant pattern. It might not be to everyone's taste. If you wanted to you have a more subtle effect, then you could use some of the less vibrant colors in the range. This would work very nicely, I think, and uh, a little more sophisticated look with the blues that we used in the previous example. A bit thinner the space there. Again, take care the edges. I didn't mention that with the pink, but I think all the pink's gone to the edge. And there may be some gaps left where I'll have to decide what I do. So here, for example, we've got quite a wide space between the two yellows. I might come back and do another pink and red in there. And again, that will break up that symmetrical approach. Mm, yeah, I think in these wider spaces, I'm gonna put some red there. That's just overlapped the yellow. You can see it's picked up a little bit. Not too bothered by that though. So, I'm now looking at them and seeing, well, is it, this is a little bit misshapen perhaps, so straighten that edge a little bit. That hadn't quite gone to the finish. Okay, so a bit of cerise. Need a little dollop more. So in the gaps, bit of pink there, bit of pink in there. So I'm pleased with this. It really does look very vibrant and that's what uh, part of the attraction of these paints is that really bright, vivid colour. I think there I might do a little bit of yellow in that gap, but round here there's a bit of space for some pink. I think I can get a squeeze a little bit of pink in there. Right, little few gaps there. Yeah, this, this area hasn't worked as well. And round here, mm, okay, let's do some more yellow. Oh, I think I've got enough in there. So round here, I think squeeze a little bit. You've got to take a little bit of care, because remember all the paints are wet. So we'll introduce a little bit of orange
when they mix. So I just want to catch that at the edge. You can see there, we've got a bit of contamination on our paper. So the best thing to do when, you, when you've got that is just fold it in and then put new paint on. But once you've got another color on there, it's very difficult to keep the color separation, which I do want to, to keep. So here, look at the edge, we've got a little triangle missing. So go in there, that edge. So I think I may have said this before, but it's, it looks haphazard, but actually you do need to take a little bit of care, especially when you're going in and filling up these last little gaps. Do remember to breathe though. <laughs> right, I think, I think I'm happy with that. I think I am. Well, at the point of doing this, you may be doing this for your own enjoyment, but you may be doing it to sell. So, and so everything needs to be considered and be deliberate, I think. So I'm almost happy, but I'm not happy about this bit here. That seems like quite a big gap. So finish off. We're nearly there, I promise. Bit of the uh, cerise, just to close that up a little. Around here, we've got a similar situation. Going to come to the end and have a look. Yeah. Right, so that's finished and we've got to leave it to dry now. There's probably more paint there than on the first piece. So that's going to take a bit longer to dry. So um, I shall leave that to dry and then give you a closer look at it once I've taken it off the lathe. Right, so that is now dry. So let's have a closer look at it. Right, so lovely sheen, of course, as you get with the iridescent paints. Uh, my favorite part of this actually is the first color, the yellow. I really like the way it's, it's broken up as it's dried. Um, but I think it needed two other colors to go with it. I think had it been yellow and pink, I don't know. Three is better. Three is always better than two, isn't it? So uh, again, to finish this one, uh, over the top of this, I would go for a shiny finish. Shiny finish over the paint and then a wax finish on the bowl in the middle when that's turned out. So your choice is again, gloss lacquer or the wipe on gloss poly. But yeah, very pleased with that. It's loud, isn't it? I like loud. So for the third blank, I'm going to be a little bit more playful and do a few different techniques on this one. I'm going to start off with some yellow just to keep that as a theme running through. I do really love the yellow on the black. I'm going to do the rolled up paper towel. Uh, get some yellow. And I think I'll work on about a third of the blank with this. So I'm just dipping the end in there. The first applications of color are going to be pretty thick. So um, what I would normally do is I'd use the middle of the blank just to dab that off. But I'm going to start right in the, in the, in the middle there and I'll press very lightly. I want to try to get the complete circle. So just changing the angle that I put this at. And you could go for a, a regular sort of pattern with this. You could go for something a bit more overlapping and random to try to break up the idea of it all being done with the circle shape. So I'm going to go for that more random approach. 
Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do half of it like this, actually. Let's go over here with a wider circle. Now the bits that look a little bit thicker, when they dry, they do lose a little bit of that. Again, focus on your edges, make sure you're not leaving an obvious bare patch. <clears throat> so looking at that, I can see here, there's much more randomness about where the pattern has gone. Over here, it's a bit more uniform, and one or two places where it hasn't covered quite enough for me. But I think of the techniques I've shown so far, this probably is the, the most delicate way of getting some colour on. You get very fine lines, and it might be enough, as I've said earlier, just to, to leave it at one colour. So I'll probably leave a little bit of just yellow, just so we've got that as a comparison point. And I'll move on now to the um, cerise. Not going to have quite so much of that because I'm not going to use the same amount of area. But there we go, another bit of paper towel. And whenever I use these colours together, I don't know why, I'm reminded of a sweet from my childhood that was a mixture of these two colours, I'm pretty sure. Send me answers on a postcard if you know what that was. Right, so I leave that area just yellow. I'm just put some pink cerise over here. Now, the more this goes on, I'm, well, I haven't waited for the yellow to dry. It's going to pick up that yellow, so I'm going to come back and reapply some, some of the cerise over that. Where they blend together, you get a sort of orangey colour, which I don't mind, but I do want the pink to have some presence. But that's enough, I think. Just going to give it a look round that edge. Are there any spaces, obvious areas that scream out and say, put some on me? No, that's fine. Okay. Next colour, going to be the turquoise. So it's quite a different look from the previous one. Even though I'm using similar colours. So a little bit in the palette again and fresh bit of paper. If you're worried about using too much kitchen roll, once you've done one colour you can just snip the end off. A pair of scissors. But the chances are I'm going to come back and use those other colours perhaps later on. So again, just to show the, the difference in the build-up, so we've got something to make clear comparisons with, I'm going to leave that area with just the two colours. Maybe in the comments you can put which we prefer. So turquoise going on now. A bit more sparingly perhaps. Again, those edges. Now, while I'm looking at that, I'm thinking I really like the yellow. The yellow and the pink is okay, but this third colour I think really makes it much more interesting, more complete. Hmm, interesting. Contemplating a, a fourth colour. Let's do it. Purple. Only a little bit this time. I don't think there's a lot of space there for, a, for another colour. But it can have its moment today. In fact, purple and yellow, I like that colour combination a lot. Okay, here we go. Again, I'll leave a little section with the four colours and put this purple on. It's darker, so it's not going to leap off 
a blank in the same way. Just come over to the edge a little bit. I'll do a little bit over here so you can see how how subtle it is in comparison to the yellow, the way it doesn't leap out so much. So I've got four lovely big wells in my palette in the middle of it, but I've got a fifth colour I'm going to use. So let's put those out of the way and get on to some green. I can't stop thinking about childhood sweets now I've mentioned it. And this bit here it reminds me of puffed ice, rainbow ice. Remember that? Or am I showing my age? Right, so the green should be more vibrant than that purple. Another rolled up piece of kitchen roll. Because I think the thing to do with these paints is just try them. Try something out, see if, he, see if it works, see if you like it. And sometimes it's quite liberating to go too far and spoil something. I do get asked sometimes at demos, how do you know if you've gone too far? Or how do you know if you've gone far enough? I think really the only way to find that out is to go past the point where you think, oh, I've, or get to the point where you think, oh, I've ruined it. Hands up if you think the green has ruined it. <laughs> it's too too in 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 my in my face with all the other colours. So, <clears throat> where was the point that I should have stopped? I think I think I'm most happy with this area. Second most happy with just the yellow. In fact, actually, right. Let's get some paint put on with some brushes. Let's. Let's go bold. So I've got some size 10 paint brushes here. Now, I am not a, an artist with a brush, but you can get some interesting patterns and shapes and texture with a, just using a paint brush. And I'll demonstrate it with the yellow again because it's, it'll show most clearly on the camera. So if I get some paint on there, yes, I can paint lines. And that might be quite effective, the different thicknesses. But I can also use the, the brush to put pats of paint on. I get a more sort of like a feathered look. Again, I'm trying to keep these at a similar sort of angle because if they start at this angle, but by the time you've gone all the way round, they've changed angle to something like that, it can look a little bit um, I'm going to say distressing to the eye if that doesn't sound too dramatic. But again, you can see simple repeated technique can build up something that looks more intricate, more interesting than just a solid block of colour. I wonder how many colours I'll put on top of this until I think I've ruined it. And if you're thinking, well, that's a waste of paint. I'm, I, you know, I don't want to waste anything. It's only a few tiny brushfuls of paint. Okay, it's beginning to get a little bit contaminated with the green and the purple there. Let's come back and finish off with some strokes and maybe we'll do some paint brush strokes over here and see what that looks like on a larger area. There's nothing to stop you taking your brush and running it through, making a pattern. Again, I'm not giving a lot of time to get this accurate, but the paint stays wet a reasonable amount of time, so you can rework it. So I can see, you know, my angle has changed a fair bit so I could come back and just go over those other areas try and get it the same pattern bit of a thick 
bit there, doesn't matter. It's, it's almost like Artex for wood turners, isn't it? Those fancy patterns you get in the ceiling. Right, I think I prefer that for its vividness and the, the difference of thickness of paint, but that's got quite a bit going for it as well. Paintbrush in some water, just to rinse that out. I think it'll be a while before I can do another color, certainly over here, but let's try running a color back through that yellow. And I think, mm, yeah, I think I'll go with the turquoise. I just need a little bit of that. There's already some in my palette still, but just another little drop. Different paintbrush, get some on. And I'm going to just go for a, another line in there. Now it's picking up the yellow, as you can see on the back side of the paintbrush, but I'll get two goes because I can use this brush the other side. Give it a little clean off. Obviously you could wait till your paint is dry. <laughs> but I'll get another couple of lines of this in. One on that side of the brush, one on that side. I didn't really wobble the brush very well there, did I? I've lost a bit of that color. Right, back in the water with that brush. I'm going to wait for this to dry properly before I put the next color on. Um, trying to decide which one, to go for a different look from that. I think I might, I might try the purple over it. If it's a bit too dark, then I can always put a third color over the top. But what you're seeing me do here is playing with the colors, playing with the paints, playing with different ways of applying them, having some fun with it. That's for me, the most important part of putting any color onto a piece of wood that, I'm, that I've turned and decorated. I want to try out different ideas. This is millimet a millimeter thick at most. If you don't like it, you can sand it off. Right, so let's wait till that's dry and then I'll put another color over the top of that. Right, so the yellow is dry. I'm just gonna put some purple over it. And I'm hoping that the yellow will allow the purple to be sh seen more clearly than putting it over the dark color. So, vaguely purple paintbrush. So some paint on the air, just wiping a little bit of the excess off. And this is the most interesting pattern to me, this one. So that's what I'm going to work on with the purple. Again, I'll start in the middle. I can just work that across and into the yellow. And that's making quite a difference to the overall appearance. I want some yellow still to come through, but you can see you get very fine impressions from the, from the bristles of the brush. That's probably enough. And there's a very large part of me wishing I'd left more room to do that on. I think it would look a lot more effective on a, on uh, a larger part of the of the platter there. I think probably two colours is enough. Uh, but the, before I before I stop, if if you do this and you put the purple on, you think, well, I really wish the yellow was still a bit more prominent. There's nothing wrong with waiting for that to dry and putting some more yellow on and making that dominate more rather than this sort of 50-50 split we've got at the moment between the two colours. While I've got the brush in my hand though, let's give that a go with the wobbly line. Pulling out some of the colour over there.
bit thick. Let's spread it a bit thinner. Spread it across the blue. You can see if you put it on th a thin coat, you do get a bit of transparency with it. It was a little hard edged and obvious. Almost like putting a wash of this colour on. That looks a bit more interesting to me, the way that the yellow, the thicker lines of the yellow are coming through. I think really I need a sort of a handler to come and tell me to stop sometimes. There just isn't anyone with that power in my life. Hmm, let's see. Bit messy, really like that, like that a lot. I think that's my favourite. And I think on another day, I might do that with some of the colours in a peacock feather. But I hope this has given you some inspiration for how to use these paints, whole range of different techniques for applying them. You don't need artistic skills. You just need a bit of paper towel or a brush, some dabbing and you're done. Right, so that's had time to dry now. So we'll have a closer look at it. It was a bit more experimental, this one. I had a little bit more fun and freedom in it. And the freedom to go wrong, you know, that's what I'm really here for today, is to show you what you can do with these colours, with some simple techniques. Don't have to be too precious about it. Try out some ideas. If you go too far with a colour, sand it off and start again. So I probably think this is my favourite part of this one. I really like the two colours together, I like the shape that the paintbrush has made and I'm pretty sure when I get home I'm going to have a go at doing that on a platter rim all the way round. I do like the little coiled uh, roll of uh, paper as well. I need to practice my wavy hand a little bit more I think to be satisfied with that. I sure remember oh, these. I didn't see you there, Terry. <laughs> ah, I do remember them. Don't they look good? Yeah, they look great. They've had a, a coat of the Wipon Poly on there on, in the gloss. Just one coat, in fact, because they were already sealed with the ebonized lacquer and the paint and, mm -hmm. the, and the paint on top of it. Didn't really need that much more on there. Could probably follow it up with another coat or two. That would. Uh, I mean, that looks great. I love that one as well. Uh, so. Could do the same on that one, obviously. Or, of course, the aerosol lacquers would be just as good on there. What's your favourite? I think the very first one. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. But if I got that all the way round, it would be very close. Oh, right. OK, yeah, yeah cool. I like this one as well. It's what you were just saying there, I was watching, about <laughs> the turning the centre out really oh, yeah. does complete them. So, yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. Mate, thank you so much for coming along and doing that for us today. Can't shake your hands. got my hands full at the moment, but no uh, it's been great. Just at the risk of repeating myself, are you still happy to keep answering any questions or comments that come in? Yeah, absolutely. Not a problem. If you've got a comment or a question, leave it below and I'll get back to you. That's brilliant. Thanks very much. All right. You take care. Good to see you again. Looking forward to the next one. See you then. Thank you. Cheers for now. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Shall I do that bit again? Have a look at it, shall we? Chucky. Go back to the top of that. I don't know why all of a sudden we just had a little flare in the, in the radio mic. Well, do you want to do a safety? Do you want to do one more for the whole thing, Terry? Just for did you want just yeah. safety? Yeah. I mean, it was only over the bit where you brought the tray out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. due to like, the problem. Yeah. The, but well, I. I, I, don't, don't. I could have filmed it better, but I didn't want to. Uh, <laughs> I didn't want to admit it.